Hey, this is Christian with Forest of Arden Healing Arts. And in the first video of this series, we talked about why it's important to walk in barefoot shoes. And we also said that the transition from regular shoes to barefoot shoes needs to be done consciously. It's something that we need to uh, think about how to do it because it's not easy. Now, <clears throat> we were all born without an arch. We were all born with feet that were some bones, some cartilage. And as we grew up, as we used our feet, this is how we developed our arch, our arches. This is how we developed the muscles and bones, ligaments and tendons in our feet. If you were not allowed to walk around barefoot a lot, or if you were placed in like heavy supportive shoes or even orthopedic shoes, um, as I was when I was a kid, then your feet didn't develop well. If you've been using normal, non-barefoot shoes throughout your life, then your feet have not developed well. And so what we need to do is we need to rehabilitate your feet from this traditional footwear to uh, barefoot footwear. And that's what we're going to talk about in this video. Now, the maker of these shoes, the Zero Shoes, has suggested that um, the transition can simply be done by buying the shoe and starting to wear the shoe a little bit at a time. And that over time, your feet will um, get stronger and be able to handle it and even uh, be able to run in these shoes. And I think that's correct, but I think there's other things that we can do to support uh, transitioning to a barefoot shoe. So the first thing is to simply take off all shoes and walk barefoot more. Begin to walk barefoot more at home. If you're at a park and it, you can walk around without getting hurt, um, the more you can walk barefoot, the better. So that's the first thing is just actually literally start walking barefoot, increasing a little bit at a time. Then you want to rehabilitate your feet and your, especially your lower legs. And one way of doing that is through getting structural body work or even foot reflexology. Go to your structural body work, go to your body worker and get someone to get in there and move the connective tissue, work deeply into your foot, move those tendons and the ligaments, the joints, so they can begin to be more flexible. Rehabilitate your feet. Now, if you can't get to your body worker, another way to rehabilitate your feet is to use these yoga tune-up self-massage balls. These small balls especially are very good for the feet. And we'll put a link up here to a video where we show you how to use these balls to loosen up and do self-massage on your feet. The next thing to consider is to stretch and align your feet and legs using yoga. Uh, there are many poses that you can do. For example, tree pose, high lunge, or a version of hero pose that we'll show you here. These train good alignment in the feet. And you can also do exercises for your feet. You've all seen those exercises where you see a person uh, picking up uh, a blanket from the ground or picking something up and throwing it with the feet. These are for the arches. And what you're doing there is strengthening the individual muscles of the feet. There are about 54 muscles in the feet and going to the feet, many of them coming from the lower leg. And all of these muscles need to be um, rehabilitated, strengthened and enlivened. They need to get better neural control so they can become coordinated to walk in the barefoot shoes. Another thing to do is to consider a transition shoe. Now, I went straight to a very um, grounded shoe that had absolutely no support and had very, very thin um, sole to it. And I started running in it and I got injured. Um, so then I pulled back from that and I started using these Merrells. Now, the Merrells have a couple features of a barefoot shoe. They have a wider toe box and they have um, pretty much of a zero drop across here, but they don't have ground feel. So they have some cushioning in here. And the cushioning served as a, as a transition for me, but these are not barefoot shoes. Once I could um, move about and run in those, then I was able to transition to um, these, the Zeros, Prios, these are the Zero Prios, which are barefoot shoes. 
they have the wide toe box, they have the zero drop, um, they have full ground field, and they're very, very, very flexible. Then when you get your barefoot shoes, first of all, wear them only at the beginning during dedicated times. It, it's like doing a workout. So you have a dedicated time to start a new workout or a new yoga routine or something like that. This is how you're going to wear your barefoot shoes. So you're going to say, today, for five minutes, I'm going to put these shoes on and I'm just going to walk around my house. And that's it for that day. And then once you can do that without any pain, without too much discomfort, then you take them out for a walk around the block or down the road or something. But don't put them on and then just start doing your day, doing errands or don't put them on and immediately start running or something like that. Put them on and use them in the way that you're doing a workout. Once you can do long periods of time, then you can start wearing them during your regular day. And so that includes, for example, wearing them to work or wearing them, say, on a trip or something like that. But similarly, if you've only been able to wear barefoot shoes for a couple hours a day, then you wouldn't use their, those barefoot shoes on a two-week holiday or something like that, right? So you, you want to transition into them time-wise and also um, the difficulty of what you're doing. If you're doing a hard day laboring somewhere, that's not where you wear your barefoot shoes in the beginning. Later on, you can get to a place where you wear them. Today, I wear my barefoot shoes all the time. In fact, I can't wear anything else. This is, I just, I have to be in these shoes. But that's because I've transitioned into them. Another thing that's important about transitioning to barefoot shoes is that you can't walk the same in barefoot shoes as you do in traditional shoes. You have to change your gait. And I'm going to show you right now what I mean. So one question we have to think about in transitioning to barefoot shoes is what gait will you be using? Because you can't use the same gait that you use with a non-barefoot shoe with a barefoot shoe. You're going to hurt yourself. You have to change your gait. Now this is the discussion that's been had already in the barefoot shoe running community and that's already been fairly concluded that you can't heel strike when you're running in barefoot shoes. You have to land on the forefoot and then the heel comes down and back up and you're using the spring of all the ligaments and muscles in your foot. So that's running. But what about walking? How should we land and how should we walk in barefoot shoes? Well, interestingly enough, when I was a kid, I used to be a uh, race walker. And in race walking, you land with your foot extended out in front of you on your heel and you would think it's a very injurious sport, but actually from the second that you land simultaneously, you're bringing your hip through and you're bringing your arm through. And so you never put any weight down on the foot itself or down on the heel itself. You're shooting right across with a motion across the ground. Well, we can see use the same principle with barefoot shoot walking. That is that when you land on your heel, you're not going to simply land and let your heel take all the weight. Instead, your arms are going to be moving, the rest of your joints are moving, and propelling yourself forward. Now, when I first started using barefoot shoes, I was trying to do this kind of, uh, those of you who know the martial arts, bagua, I was trying to use this kind of bagua walk where I would slide my foot forward and step, and then slide it forward and step, there was no pressure being put on anything. That was a great way to walk, but it was very slow and I wasn't getting anywhere too quickly. So that wasn't going to work. Um, then I, I, I tried to come and, and, and land on my forefoot, but there was a lot of kind of flapping going on on the ground. So now I'm watching other people's videos and thinking about how to do this. I've come up with this suggestion here. So your heel touches, but you're not committing your weight yet when your heel touches. Your heel touches, your forefoot comes down, and then you commit your weight. The way to do that, though, is that when your heel touches, you have to bend your knee and your hip a little bit. So your ankle, your knee, and your hip has to bend. So this is more of a kind of a rolling through type of walking. And one thing that's really helped me with that is Tai Chi. The movements in Tai Chi where I'm moving from my Dantian here has allowed my legs and uh, 
joints here to be flexible enough to roll through. So let me try a couple different ways. I'm gonna show you a couple different ways of walking. So here I am um, landing on my heel and not using my weight at all. So this is how not to walk on barefoot shoes. Okay, that's a lot of pressure. It almost hurts. It hurts my, my heel a bit. <clears throat> now, let's see if I can find a way of rolling through. And see, that feels a lot more comfortable. I am touching, bringing the foot down, then I commit my weight. I have a slight bend, and then I touch with the other foot, commit my weight, and a slight bend. Now, one of the things that does is it requires you to kind of move your hips a little bit more. That's fine. That's okay. Okay, and the last thing I want to say about barefoot shoes is that if you're using barefoot shoes with regular socks, you still have your feet, uh, your toes pinched. So my suggestion is that if you're going to wear barefoot shoes, you should be wearing toe socks to keep your toes free. Now, even when you're comfortable with your barefoot shoes and you can wear them all the time, keep getting body work on your feet. Keep doing yoga with your feet. Keep thinking about the alignment of your feet and your ankles and your knees. Keep working on it. You're past the rehabilitation stage, but you have to now prevent foot problems. Wearing barefoot shoes is a great way to prevent foot problems and also getting body work. If you have questions on how to do this, you can reach out to Annie or I here at Forest of Arden Healing Arts. Send us an email or talk to us through any of our social media, Facebook or Instagram, and we can talk to you about it. If you're in Berlin and you want to come in for a body work session, we're here. We're, we're Forest of Arden Healing Arts. And also you may find body workers in your own hometown. Or you can contact us to book a problem-solving session. We can guide you online using these self-massage balls and talk you through the transition to the barefoot shoes. Now, in our next uh, video on this series, Annie and I are going to talk about the barefoot shoes that we have tried, give you a review of how they worked for us, and that may be helpful for you in uh, terms of thinking about what to buy.